Welcome everyone to the Nethercast podcast. If you're new to the channel or listening for the very first time, in addition to Mortal Kombat YouTube videos, we also do a long-form podcast talking more in-depth on Mortal Kombat. This is currently our ninth year doing this. I say we because in addition to me, Cyborg, you also get Temp, who is our gameplay expert, Razor, who practically wrote the Bible on Mortal Kombat's lore. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone more knowledgeable on MK's lore than him, as well as Shad, who joins Razor in his love for the lore and adds some extra entertainment to boot. On today's episode, we're answering questions from our listeners here on YouTube, in our Discord, which you can find in the description. We'd love to have you join our awesome community going five years strong with daily conversations of all things Mortal Kombat, as well as from Twitter. So without further ado, um, Yelisama sent in several questions and tackling just the first one for now. What would you need to see to get excited enough about MK12 story that you can look past any time travel, Titan, retcon, and chapter system or any other decision that would otherwise ruin it for you? Tournament so, arc. All right. That's my answer. <laughs> I would like to see a really cool tournament based story. I think that'd be really sick. And of course, like just a really good roster would be necessary for that. Yeah, it seems like they're talking specifically about the story. Like, what would get you excited about the story, despite all the things that they've done to upset you <laughs> with the previous games? How could they bring it back a for you? A swing that this trend of upsetting continues in MK12, I think, is the way it's phrased. Oh yeah, look past all that stuff. But yeah, what what would make you happy so temp's got tournament arc because they've never done a tournament arc like properly yet even in the 95 movie that it's not really a tournament like not actually not in, like the best of the best style right so like i would like to see like a formal turn you can maybe argue battle of the realms but even then i i would say that's still problematic i th i think if you actually like go fight by fight in Battle of the Realms and write everything down, you might find something resembling a bracket, or at least that everybody who was eliminated was eliminated on screen, as opposed to a nine where Sonya's eliminated off screen. <laughs> like, she's in the tournament until Shang says Liu Kang is the only guy left in the tournament. She won was, her fights. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Smoke was also eliminated off screen in MK2, and that was like right after he joined Raiden. So yeah, yeah. I mean, in MK9, in, in MK2, in MK9. I'm actually not sure Smoke was ever in the tournament. In MK9. No, I don't think he was. He wasn't. Well, Raiden said that Cage and Smoke had already been eliminated. That's what Did I think. Yeah, the uh, that's well. Fair. Now I'm second guessing myself, but I will double check that. This all reminds me of the Dorkly video where they point out in Mortal Kombat 1 how this isn't how a tournament was organized. <laughs> and the, like Johnny Cage is complaining. Yeah. He's like, a tournament I'm not supposed to face like everybody else. <laughs> like That's not how a tournament works. Yeah, like the, literally <laughs> nine starts with Johnny having two fights in a row. That's the first two matches in a bracket cannot contain the same team or person. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. Uh, what would I need to get excited? Okay, so there's one really cheap trigger they could pull that would make me uh happy regardless of how trash. Like, you could make the worst story in the world, but if Kung Lao and Serena have a... Or uh, if Kwai Liang and Serena have oh, a God. romance... Oh, God, Kung Lao and Serena. Yeah, that, ignore that first. That's not it. <laughs> if, if Kwai Liang... They stopped listening as soon as you said Kung Lao and Serena, and they're taking... Like, oh, we know how to make them happy. They didn't fit, They didn't keep listening <laughs> for your yeah, correction. Yeah, that was... That was that's going to pay dividends in the future. That's that's good for me. Uh, no, but if, if the younger Sub-Zero, with the scar over his eye hooks up with Serena in, in a romantic fashion that will lead me to believe that one day there will be a third Sub-Zero. Like, it, one day, Kwai Liang will get a combat kid. That would be, uh, well, the easy way. That would be the one thing they could do that they could nest it in a pile of absolute flaming garbage, and I'd still be like, well, they did this one thing I've always wanted. <laughs> interesting uh, i like that there's that thing yeah yeah that's the that's the the one little that's the this 
This one trick, Razor hates it. <laughs> Don Don Chincholo or um, Kittleson, whoever writes it these days, needs to be like, there it is. We know how to please no, this if, man. Get it, get it on paper. We can't save actually, this game, but do this. <laughs> if you actually wanted to make a good game and telegraph to me that the game is going to be what I want, then I would need to see a tournament taking place in the year 1992 on Shang Tsung's island. And I would need to see that only the cast from MK1 is in attendance. Like, Katana's not there. Uh, and, and I would need to see Liu Kang is just a monk and not the god of fire and time or whatever. Right. So basically, uh... basically do, do Resident Evil 1's remake to MK1. Yeah, and you just want a very faithful retelling of what yeah, it's supposed just, to be. Yeah, just That's one time. Just one time to get it right. And then after that, you can remake it wrong as many times as you want, because the one good one will exist. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, for me, I think... I mean, obviously, I'm not too, uh, like... I don't want to say picky, because I don't think anybody's being picky here. Uh, I think those are all very reasonable expectations for what it should be. Uh, but I've definitely been more casually minded, especially when it comes to story. Um, I, I've, I consider myself fairly easy to please in, in that regard, or maybe it's just it's not where my bread is buttered, so to speak. So I don't have a whole lot writing on it. Never really have. Um, so for me, all I want really is just like the characters that I've really wanted to actually matter like, I liked seeing Cyrax in MK11 after not getting him in MKX. Um, so that itself made me giddy, and I was really, you know, excited at that. And I just want more story development for the characters that never seem to get any. Like, we seem to be getting the same development for the same characters over and over and over, or just no development at all, and we just rehash the same circular things between Scorpion and Sub-Zero, or uh, Sonya and Kano, and so on and so forth. And, like, <clears throat> I just want these other characters to actually get their time in the sun and mean something and actually matter and not just, not just be there in story, but to actually have moments that mean something and that you think, man, that really was awesome. As a Mortal Kombat fan for 25, 30 years, this is what I wanted. Like, Razor with Kui Liang and Serena. Like, for me, that moment is, like, I just want to see Cyrex, like, progress i don't want to see lin Kuei cyrax anymore i want to see cyrax like continue on with his story whether it's the one that he originally had or whether it's his stolen one from smoke just give me something please i just want to see this man be able to get his humanity back or whatever the case like i want to see smoke and and sub-zero have an interaction where like they got to confront that i want to see sub-zero go and like chase down the cyber lin Kuei and like i want to see these things that we've we've all wanted for so many years, but we just, we get teased by them and then they're either happen off screen or they don't happen the way they were supposed to. They don't make any sense. Or like I said, we just focus on the same few people in the last couple games. It's been the combat kids. And I just, I, I, I'm not interested in that. I want, I want these characters that we've been waiting for a payoff for, for like 15, 20 years now. Anyways, that's for me. Win, Lord. Win's gonna be my time. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I'd be willing to put up with just about anything if you would just give me the Smoke and Sub-Zero storyline I have wanted to see since 1996 or so. God, Lord Almighty. It's been a very long time. I'd put up with just about anything to actually see that, to actually follow through on that abandoned that particular abandoned plot line it's all i can really ask for i mean i think at this point in a lot of ways that's the best we can hope for and i don't mean that like pessimistically but like like i said for me that moment in mk11 was cyrax and sub-zero like that was cool to see i just wish there was more of that and i wish the story mode was like all sorts of that kind of stuff it shouldn't be I few wish... and far between I just wish it was a scene like that, but the robot was purple. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you, man. I mean, it's not like, easy being a Smoke fan. I, I get it. The, the one disclaimer, though, is I don't know if anything, and I mean anything, 
could make me okay with another time travel game, like you say in the question, the Sama. I'm so tired of it. If, I yeah. have, if, 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 if MK12 comes along and the first thing I see out of a trailer is it's a time travel story, I'm going to shoot myself and others. Now, what if it starts just, off that I way as like the first chapter to set up whatever new reboot it is? Like how we did going from Armageddon to MK9, like, essentially. Because, uh, I mean, they played no, the like, what was supposed to be the end of Armageddon leading I MK9 need, in that no. game. That's I mean, the I'm last just, thing. I, that's the last thing I want. I need a clean slate. You, you, you tell me. Well, it's contingent <laughs> on this timeline, and this is attached to that timeline, and I'm still making the comparisons in my head, even though I know I made. Yeah, the thing is, aftermath set it up in such a way that we don't actually ever have to see the hourglass again. Yeah, like, that's the, fair. The last I shot just... is that Liu Kang has already created the next timeline. And he's just hanging out with Great Kung Lao. And you could do Great Kung Lao or you could skip ahead to the tournament. But we don't ever have to see the hourglass again. And yeah. I will tell you, the point where I turned on Snowblind was when we see Kronika's hourglass in the movie. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't even know, obviously. I, and having not seen it, I had no idea that was ever a plot element for that movie. Like, I yeah. just assumed it was... Yeah, the, the Pure premise, else world, like the what premise happened? of Snowblind is that it's a continuation of Kano's arcade ending. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's what would happen if That's he got the hourglass, <laughs> which, by the way, doesn't make sense because in story mode, he both versions of Kano die. So how could he ever get close to the hourglass? <laughs> yeah, it just makes me think of Family Guy, where they're like, "Yep, it's a Kano episode." You could yeah. turn it off. No one would blame you. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah. All right. There's there's that. Um, I'd actually... Well, no, go on. But the next question that is, I, I was going to say, like, it, honestly, if you get smoke in Sub-Zero and, that, like, and fix that relationship, like, or if you put, like, Lee May and Bo right here together, like, I'm willing to stomach some time travel if you get the best, coolest characters in the right places. But sure. that... Um, I mean, they can do that, Kano. but you're not touching Lee May. <laughs> <laughs> I signed nothing. No, it's just like, um, because I, I, I mean, I, I think this is one of those instances where perfection is the enemy of progress, right? Sure. Like, I don't expect, like, the writers to do a faithful Mortal Kombat anymore, so I'm willing to take, like, an you're emotionally for those little accurate moments. story between the characters, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's I mean, how I smoking feel. Smoking is the new smoke, if we're being honest. That's the problem. We're never going to get smoking some zero again, as long as he's hanging out with Scorpion, because Scorpion kind of, like, <laughs> usurped that role. So yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think you and I are in similar places. I mean, it sounds like everybody's somewhat in a similar place outside of just the complete lack of desire. I mean, none of us want to see the time travel stuff, but yeah. You know, I, I don't know. 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 I don't know if NRS understands this, but a human being can have more than one friend at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they know, dude. I don't think... It's not that they don't know. You can only have, have one bestie. Yeah, that's, that's mm. the weird fucking thing. When I was talking about how there's all these, like, obvious tag teams, there are no trios, though. Like, why can't uh, Liu Kang and Kitana hang out and Jade is also there? Kitana only <laughs> hangs out with one person at a time. If uh, it was Jade, I'd be like very suspicious of Liu Kang. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't underrate a threesome. Just you With know, give level chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, yeah. Hey, what do you think about? I mean, before we move on to the next question, but just a real quick question: What do you think if they reset the timeline, right? Like they, like they teased, and they go back to the Great Kung Lao, blah blah. blah. Not that that's going to be the story, because I mean, a lot of people think that's going to be. Let's say he does reboot the timeline, though, not knowing because they never got to it in this timeline, that eventually it gets to where we get to basically Deception, Onaga, and that's what introduces all those 3D era characters, and that's why that's how they write them into this game, because Lou wasn't aware of what happened in the original timeline, so he doesn't am, try to avoid it. I am it. open to the possibility of that, but the thing is, if you're going to uh, skip ahead in the story <laughs> of a new timeline and have uh, several of the game's events have happened off screen. Right. 
then you better have somebody write the fuck down exactly what happened <laughs> off screen. Otherwise, they will fuck it up. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, seen just look slot. at the original Onslaught. series at that point. That's all they need to do. I'm not saying that's... <laughs> I know it sounds easy, but... The mobile game... Saying. The mobile game takes place in media race of a timeline where a tournament, maybe two tournaments have already happened, but Katana hasn't gone bad yet, but Sub-Zero is currently the Grandmaster in Training Frost. If you don't make them write it down, they'll get it wrong. Yeah. And it won't make any sense. Right. Remember, uh, I, yeah. rem remember Ermac in the MKX comic in the game? <laughs> yeah, <and> stuff <laughs> like that. I was just more curious, like, because everybody, you know, thinks we're either going back to that or whatever, and some people think maybe Onaga, but that's that was my thought process. What I if just, we got kind of like, it's a complete I, reboot, but rather than retell one through three and so on and so forth, what if we just jumped ahead to essentially Deception's events? I just, I absolutely do not trust the NRS writers with a time skip or starting in the middle of a story. Sure. They have a history of being bad at that. Well, I think that's absolutely what we're getting. I, I, I no, I talked about this <clears> on the Warriors <throat> Shrine. I don't, I didn't think about them starting a deception. But what I think MK12 is going to be is Mortal Kombat 2 with an alternate history modified by Prior Luke King. That is what I think we're getting. Yeah, come October, but we'll see. All right. Well, let's move on to Dap asks. There is two buttons on a desk. Button number one permanently replaces Dom Chianciolo with Kittleson. Button number two rolls the dice for NRS to hire somebody completely new. Which do you press? Button one. So you want to take the guaranteed Kittleson? Yes, the, because otherwise the, you're going to get like, Netflix trash. That is what's going to happen. <clears throat> you're going to get there... Netflix original writers or something of that nature or an Amazon Prime like original. That Yeah, modern writers are just not very good. At least yeah. with Kittleson, I know what I'm getting. It's also the problem of like, we've already seen what happens when somebody claims they're like a mega fan of the series and oh, they used to play the arcade games and they do this and they do that. Didn't the movie writer say all that? <laughs> and then we got what we got. But yeah, he's that's like, called PR, baby. That's to called be PR. Fair, to be fair, the writer who said all that <laughs> was a third writer on that movie, and he did actually add a lot of things from the games into that script. It was way worse before him. The things he couldn't change, Arcanas and Cole, those were there before he got there, and the producer was probably saying, these need to be there, and you can't change those. Okay. Well, and I, I appreciate that Kittleson, I think Kittleson actually does mean well. I, I, I don't think he's the worst writer in the world. I think it, he does intend. I do not get like ego trip, self insert vibes from Kittleson yeah, here's at the, all. My, well, do I. my issue with Kittleson is that the guy obviously does know some stuff about the 3D era and is a a fan, perhaps more on the casual side than a super fan like me. Uh, but he's very much a a uh, wants to smile and kiss up to the boss kind of won't rock the boat, needs this job kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's had his turn, so I press button two. Oh, okay. Chad? Now, when you say button two rolls the dice, does that mean that there is a chance I'm sticking with Dom? No. No, completely no, either way, new. Dom's out. Someone it's completely just, new, it says. It's, but, okay, button that, one that, is that, Kittleson, button two is an unknown. Then I'm well, slapping the number chance, three. Like, the number would be so low. The odds of getting Dom when there's like millions <laughs> of writers out there are so low. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to roll the dice just because, again, I didn't have that many problems with Kittleson's writing. The Lord knows. The, the guy tried with what he had to work with. But, you know, there's as much chance of someone good as someone not good. So, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Why not? I disagree right. with that, by the way. I think there's way more bad writers than good writers. So I think if I'm being generous, there is a 20% chance you're getting a good writer. And that that's like me, like using like the most like generous model possible. Now, if I'm, I'm wrong, wrong, great, but yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> Roll those dice, baby. <laughs> I, you know what? There's it's a it's a gamble either way. It, but yeah. I know what Kittleson is capable of. He had a turn on the wheel. 
let's give somebody else a try. What did, That's which, all I'm I know he wrote the comic, but what else did Kittleson write? Did he write anything uh, for the game? He he wrote he wrote eleven. Oh, I mean, Dom was like a co-writer, but Kittleson wrote most of it. I'm pretty sure. Like he wrote the the actual script of eleven and aftermath. And my understanding is together they both wrote several, like, various intros. Like, I, I think the, the versus intro writing is like a, they go all around the building and with everyone on the team picking suggestions and things like that. That's probably I mean, the only reason we got All I know is that uh, the only things Kittleson was not there for, uh, the only things that were written after he left was the final uh, pack with Melina and Rambo and Rain. Hmm. Right. It, it's such a great question from Daps because it's funny because we actually all agree on everything, but yet came to vastly different conclusions despite <laughs> agreeing on all the premises, right? Um, I, I mean, I mean, sure, I get it, but like, I would rather have Kittleson writing than like... It's the devil you know, know versus the devil you don't. I mean, yeah. I don't want like a that's Thor the Love and Thunder kind of situation, right? I know what, what Kittleson can do, and I do think he means well. Um, when he's, I'm sure if he had more freedom and he did a little bit more research, I think we would get well, something better than You know what? Thor Love and Thunder is almost the exact opposite because uh, Ragnarok was directed by Taika Watiti but was written by someone else. Love and well, Thunder mean, was written yeah. by Taika. And so if you know what to expect from Taika, then Love and Thunder is the one that's what you expect. But the thing is, though, what I mean literally within the example is Kittleson is protecting us from the writers of Love and Thunder. That's what I mean, because we can't get, you know, a well, shitty director slash writer if Kittleson's in the spot. Sure, if Dom were to stay, but the question specifically says Dom is fired. <laughs> well, that's what, yeah, we're, we're getting Kittleson, right? So, like, Well, you're getting Kittleson instead of Dom, or you're getting someone new instead of Dom. And I know, I, I know what Kittleson does. I've seen it before. I'm willing to take the gamble. <laughs> I, think, like, it's I just imagine Kittleson being like... I think like, you can get so much worse. I, I think just, 11, 11, yeah. Oh, it could, it could definitely be worse. But I, just, I was just saying I could just imagine Kittleson being like, guys, look, you know what you got with me? And then Razor still pushes the button. He yeah, still yeah. pushes button too. He's like rapidly tapping it as hard as he can. Yeah, trying not to be right. awkward in front of Kittleson. You, but I'm a gambler. He's slapping button number two the second he started typing out that question. I'm a, I'm, I'm a risk taker. I want to I wanna see what else is out there. I was picturing Razor hitting the button and the whole franchise just bursts into flames and Razor's like, oh, so that's what happens. <laughs> I regret it's nothing. It's already in flames. Like, what's it going to do? Burn more? <laughs> <sighs> oh, this button turns up the gas. Interesting. <laughs> well, that's, you know, I like that analogy because it's like, which, okay, let's say your house is on fire. One button will summon one firefighter a second button will summon three fighter fighters or no fighter fighters, right? Like, that's kind of the situation I feel like we're in. So I don't know. I, I, this is turning I, into I a know. trolley problem. Yeah, yeah, this is a... This... To be fair, uh, I think I'm with, I think I'm with uh, Razor and Chad on this one. I'll go number two. Not yeah, that I have any... Cool. Like, I don't even know... Look, I didn't read most of the MKX comics. I forget more about the story modes than i like just i ever remembered to begin with Look, so I, like... I will tell you one thing i do remember from the mkx comics uh one thing about sean kittleson as a writer when he doesn't have a partner he fucking loves puns <laughs> <laughs> one thing i don't appreciate and that i i wish wasn't the case is i wish like when they market a comic as being like a canon tie-in to something and then they just go against it and they don't actually follow what the, the comic set forth. They did that with both MKX and I mean, uh, Injustice. The thing is, that was really every, irritating. Every company that has <clears throat> ever had a tie in comic in history does that. Yeah. Halo, well, this, respect, was, this, was, this was a thing with all of the Michael Bay Transformers movies back in the heyday, if you want to call it, I will, I will, six and seven. 
it's not written with any intent to try to like get you material to prep you for the series. It's to sell you some goddamned merch. That's all Here, it is. Here's the There's thing. There's no planning that goes into it. The people who write the comic and the people who write the game are seldom talking to each other. I will give you an example of how I know for a fact that there is no such thing as a canon tie-in comic in all of media. Halo. The Halo series respects and incorporates its tie-in books more than any other franchise out there, and yet they ignored their Marvel Comics tie-ins. <laughs> what about the Mortal Kombat Deception comic tie-in? What about MK vs. DC? I mean, the MK versus DC one doesn't even have a story. It's just a bunch of pictures. And, <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> Deception one was canceled, man. Yeah, the Deception one wasn't finished. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the one that came with like the special edition, the one little tiny little booklet that I almost crashed my car looking at. That's the versus DC one. Yeah. It it doesn't. It's just. It's just. It wrote. It's a picture book. <laughs> it's, it's a well, picture I would also book. say it, that it goes, like, there's... like the the story of the game is uh, Dark Side was merged with Shao Kahn, and <laughs> yeah, all the comic saying, shows man. you is Dark Side merging with Shao Kahn. There's no actual story in that comic. It's, it's canon, pictures. man. It's canon. Well, see, that's in this instance, there's tie-in comic and there's a tie-in comic. Yeah, this there's... is a little. This is a little accessory adjacent to the game, included with the game. Yeah, there's it's, there's it's a official big material. difference. With, and then uh, there's, then comics there's comics that came with the game I'm versus. Just, yeah. I'm just bullshitting here. <laughs> it's fine. Let's move on. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> let's just tease it. Um, Donkey Darko seventy seven asks, "Do you ever think about me when the chips are down?" I don't know hey, if the anyone? chips have ever been down. <laughs> have they not been I mean, down enough? I I've never been like, constantly. like what, what, what defines the chips being down? Do I have to be pinned behind a boxes while the, while a enemy? <laughs> is this a is, song lyric? I think am this I taking fire? Lyric. Like, is this, is this like a fucking bad boy situation where I'm, you know, fighting crime and I'm waiting for my partner to back me up? I've, I've never, the chips have never been down. When I tell me. you to drive, that's how you drive. That's bad boys right there. Uh, <laughs> thanks for sending in the question, Donkey Darko. Long time uh, YouTube subscriber. So, appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to say yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> of course. Um, next up, we got... A... Aguedo Borrego. Yeah, as I say, is that a G or a Q? I couldn't tell. I have a squiggly red line. But uh, oh, Aguedo Borrego. I'm pretty sure I messed that up, but yeah, you're you're supposed to roll that. Roll the borrego. Okay, when you almost said borracho, didn't you? I can't. It's hard. Spanish when is hard. They ask when MK12 revealed. <laughs> There's no question mark on it. It's just, when's when when MK12 revealed? <laughs> Maybe it's a warning. Like when MK12s were revealed, watch out. Oh God, yeah. it's like yeah. Candlejack. They just got stolen. Yeah. It's really you he didn't have time for anything else. It's just he must win, and he—they got him. Yeah. Uh, well, when do He's I from think the MK, When do I think MK12 will be revealed? I think it's going to be sometime around Combo Breaker, if not at Combo Breaker, at least the announcement or initial trailer. So that's May. So if I'm picking a month, I'm picking May. That I'm picking E3 for like the more in-depth reveal and possibly playable. That'll be their reveal event this time. Unless they want to host their own again. And yeah. then I'm picking late September, early October for release. Because that would be roughly the same time frame as MK11. And I miss MK being in the fall. So I want it to return. That's, I saw that's... your video on the release date, and I agree. I think October is very likely for a release date. So I'm going to say June. June for the announcement? Uh, yeah, I figure early summer sounds yeah. reasonable. Yeah, because it's four months perfectly, just like MK11. Yeah, I just think like that combo breaker. That's the only like big event outside of E3, obviously. That like they don't need an event. We kind of had a talk about this in the MK12 hype chat or whatever. There was some there was some debate back and forth whether they need like a a huge event to reveal something at, and not that combo breaker is you know considerably a huge event when you compare it to like a video game awards, but. 
I do mean, I don't the, think. Do they need a huge event with hundreds of millions of viewers or tens of millions of viewers, or do they just can they just throw something up on YouTube and put a press release out? And I think it's the latter. I think they. Can I don't. I don't do think people thing. are in a hurry to throw their own like <laughs> crowds together post COVID. Sure. So to me, like I don't think you need a big event to reveal this game. You can just put a trailer up on the internet like they used to do, like with MK9 and I believe MKX and the old games. Uh, so I think they can just do that if they want. They have the social media presence and the marketing behind them to make sure it's a hit. You don't need a video game awards. But also, I mean, if you want to do Combo Breaker, to me, it would be cool just for the crowd reaction. And then if they want that crowd reaction, they can record it and use it in all sorts of videos going forth. That's why I think maybe we get like the initial teaser trailer at Combo Breaker just for the crowd reaction, and then the big blowout will be at more at E3. If they even go to E3, who the hell knows? But I, yeah. ultimately, I don't think they're beholden to any event. They'll just they've got they've got the the money and the the presence. I mean, the to, reality uh, is the vast majority of people just see it online anyway. Right. So right. as long as you do something on Twitch and YouTube, that's all the Pro promotion you really need yeah i mean it's going to spread like wildfire as soon as it goes up mortal kombat's trending almost every single week and it has been for months so i don't i don't think they need a big event to get the word of mouth out there's already hunger for the next mortal kombat it's a it's a very well established brand i don't think the big events are doing that well anyway right now <clears throat> yeah i don't think any like the microsoft or any of them are going to e3 this year once again so E3 ain't what it used to be. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, comments? When MK12 revealed? I'm also going to say around o October. For, for the release? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, rolling. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. Uh, Corey Freeman. Mortal Kombat 11 is trash, and anyone who likes or supports that game as being good in any way, game-wise, should be beat. That's not there a question. A, yeah, there was not a question in there. It's more of a threat or a statement. That's not, that's not a question, but let's just put it let's just put it out on the table for people to unpack and consider. <laughs> well, I also think Cyborg it's like the previous question. It's like the guy forgot to put the question mark. So it's just like you have to read it like a Ron Burgundy kind of way, right? Like, <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11 is trash, and anyone who likes or supports that game as being good in any way, game wise, should be beat. You gotta put your Go hands up on your yourself, right? San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, who put the question mark up on the teleprompter? Um, all right. I mean, yeah, obviously, we have been fairly critical of MK11 while still admitting some of the strengths it had as well. But uh, yeah, I don't think you're gonna run into too much of a hot take there, um, outside of, you know, being beaten. <laughs> but... I, I think, like, I if if I were to to steal man MK11, there are things that are cool that are only in MK11, and if you want to play those things, you have to play that game. I, I can also see people, yeah. There is only one single thing that I like about MK11, and it's that it has the most uh, classic skins of any of the NRSR games. I just yeah, think if you want a... modern sub shredder, that's where you go. And uh, I think. Those... Some of those classic skins look incredibly good in comparison to what we had in yeah, X yeah, the, and 9. The, the graphics are finally good in an MK game. Also, it's been, it's been a while. Yeah, my two biggest compliments are A, the roster, and because I thought its roster was pretty solid. Same with Injustice 2. So if anything, they're on a pretty good roll with putting in like a lot of fan-demanded characters. Um, so that, I feel like, has been less of a complaint on our end um, the last couple iterations, um, comparatively to, like, MKX, which we were all very unhappy with. Um, but then the other thing beyond the roster I thought was pretty solid was I thought it was a pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty, pretty, it was a beautiful game, like, to look at, in my opinion. Yeah. And we got friendships yeah. back, which was cool. We wanted friendships. The faces were nice, and nobody had weird shoulders. <laughs> yeah, like when Django. I think, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say when I think of like MK9, MKX, MK11, I'd rather play MK9. I'd rather 
God, I don't, I don't remember what the hell I said about MKX, but I was going to say, I, MK11's nicer to look at than MKX is where I was going with that. MKX was pretty pretty rough. Well, I mean, Django still played a lot of MK11 and because he loves Fujin. And if you yeah. want to play Fujin, you have to play MK11. That, I mean, that's, that's just it. no real competitive way to play MK4. <clears throat> yeah. And that's a big, Fujin's a big deal. Like, I don't want to say like, oh, you know, you're playing it for a character. It's not just any character. Man. Yeah. I mean, we asked for Fujin for many years. Like, we've been, this is our ninth year doing this. We're on our ninth year right now of doing this podcast. And Fujin was unanimously between all of us our like sacrificial, or not a sacrificial, our, our golden goose, basically. That's the one that we kept saying this is the one, much like now it's moved more towards like Serena and Smoke, so on and so forth. So, yeah, for the longest time, and then we finally got them. So, yeah, there's definitely no underselling that. Otherwise, it would seem like we're ungrateful in that regard. Yeah, and he, he is one of the few characters in the game that's not on fun. No. I still really enjoy playing Frost for what it is, but I just don't no. like playing like... I don't like the grind or <laughs> anything else about like all the work you have to do to play that game. But uh all right, so now we're going to Crazy Crazy Forever. Was Ermac intended to be an MK11 due to his unique style in the crypt? Maybe? Maybe. I don't yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't think so. No, I tend to lean towards no. Like it feels like maybe they were trying to give him at least sort of an interesting design to start off with. But then they just kind of fell apart halfway through, and he's got yeah. like bits and bobs from like people's gear. So I wouldn't really put any real stake into it. It's not that great of a costume to start off with. I don't think it was worked on for more than a week. Maybe they also they also had twelve DLC characters. Like if he was if he was like worked on, and then to a point where they he just missed the roster. Uh, I feel like he would have been one of the later DLC characters and just finished up. So I feel yeah, like this yeah, was his game probably, to sit out. Like probably that they only designed that costume for the crypt and he was not actually planned for the roster or something. Yeah, like him and Reptile sat out. Noob and um, Rain came in. Am I missing somebody? I forgot. Like I feel like they cycle them out. Unfortunately, because we should get multiples of them. It shouldn't always be like the super fun, popular characters that are cycled out while so many others just keep getting in somehow uh let's skip forward some of the second questions of people let's go to tame lizard how would you feel if the devs were to take a completely different art slash design approach for mk12 or any other future title a step away from the ultra realistic art style into something like anime any preferences or desires on a specific art style I'll start by saying I do not want an MK anime fighter. Same. No, I, it's just I, I everything. Don't think, I don't think that a Western developer should be making a game with an anime art style because they're not going to be good at it and it's going to feel disingenuous. There are also just so many anime fighters out there, there are. right now. It's 95% of the market. Why would you want the game to blend into there it? There is that. I would take um, like a drawn style for MK. That would be kind of cool. But yeah, I'm not, I don't have any interest in anime specifically just because one, I'm not super into anime. I've seen a few. Um, I don't hate it. But two, anime fighters, and this has been a complaint of mine for like Marvel versus Capcom or Guilty Gear to maybe a lesser extent. I hate when I play a game, like a fighting game, especially where when I'm doing attacks, for some reason, it lacks impact. Like, there's so many things happening on the screen. And I know this is, like, one of the complaints about, like, that style of game, the anime fighter, is that, what do they call it, Temp? You may have heard this, where it's, like, it's visual overload or something. Like, there's just so many, so much shit going on in the screen. Sensory like so many, overload. Yeah, it's, like, special effects galore, and there's all these, like, things going on that sometimes you lose your characters and all the effects that are going on. I don't particularly like that and i also don't like i like things to have weight it's one of the things that's why i prefer nrs games because i like when i hit somebody i like it to feel like i hit them when i uppercut them into the air i want to feel it like i want to feel that weight of my characters and i feel like in anime it's always pretty floaty and i feel like when i'm punching and kicking it doesn't 
register to me as much. I don't feel like what I'm doing on screen has much impact on it. I just feel like I'm seeing a lot of visuals. I don't know. Yeah, that's, you're not that's wrong. Me. Like a lot of that started, I mean, you mentioned Marvel, but like I think it really began with Marvel versus Capcom 1. Because when you do yes. a super Marvel versus Capcom 1, a portrait of your character shows up on the screen, takes up about a third of the screen, then your characters are teleported to an asteroid field in an alternate dimension. And then usually a laser beam that takes up two thirds of the screen shows up from either yeah. like Machine or Morrigan. Um, and that is like, they, they looked at that and they're like, this is gonna be the standard. And that's kind of what we've been dealing with in a lot of anime fighters. But you're right to, the, to a lesser extent, Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear does have that screen filling stuff, but it's not really the bar. Yeah, it's not um, the same. I, I That's why I say lesser. You're right about sure. the impact though. Like, I mean, in, in Guilty Gear, you can like stab someone with an, like, a six foot ice spike. And it's like a wiffle bat, right? <laughs> yeah, so I feel nothing is the problem. Like, there's cool shit. It looks cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, watching an anime fighter is a lot of fun. I like watching them. But then when I'm playing them as a as an MK guy, as an Injustice guy, even as like a, a Street Fighter or a Soul Calibur guy, when I'm playing them, I like to feel that impact. And I just don't with anime fighters. I feel like I'm doing 800 things, but none of them are actually making me feel any of it. If that makes sense. There's, uh, there's other reasons, too. Like, MK, going back in his history, it's a series that traditionally kind of stood apart because it was so realistic. It was based on motion capturing real people. And I think that's one of the... I think it's kind of MK's... One of its defining characteristics is that it's, generally speaking, real-looking dudes. So, no, I wouldn't take that away. Like... I think that there are things that you could do within the fighting game engine itself to maybe make the looks, to make the looks, good one, to maybe I, make the special moves stand out a bit more, make them feel a bit more otherworldly or stylized or differently animated, sure. But at its core, I would keep it relatively realistic. And like, seeing, I, a, seeing anime versions of Mortal Kombat characters was kind of cool back in the day, like seeing what people do with them on Mugen and stuff like that, but it's kind of cool as a novelty thing. I, and, and, and granted, if there was like a theoretical Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter crossover, like, you know, people have been dreaming about for years, I would probably want Capcom to handle that and do with the MK characters as they would, but that's another section of the woods entirely. Yeah, I think Mortal Kombat's identity would not translate properly if you had any kind of cell shading effects at all. And, um... I will say that I wish the art style of the concept art would uh would go away from the 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 industry standard painterly style uh and go back to uh the the hand drawn sketches that we saw in the Shaolin monks era because I think that would very much encourage them to design less overcomplicated costumes. Uh, it would also really help uh, tell your work apart from fucking AI art, which is a problem now. So that's, that's the only thing I would really change. It's just the concept art phase. I would still want the final product to look uh, photorealistic. Especially now that they've actually gotten good at the like the face mo motion capture and all that kind of stuff, and we're not having to deal with the uh, the ugly attempts to render people that we saw in Nine and X and the Injustice, the first right. Injustice at least, where everybody looked like they were made of clay. Yeah. Tell you the truth, I don't have a terribly strong opinion one way or another. I, I don't think anime Mortal Kombat would look good. Now, it would be cool to see, like, a Japanese studio take a stab at a Mortal Kombat project. Not, sure. not even a video game, but just, like, a 12-episode like a episode series, maybe. Or yeah, I never you saw the cyberpunk would, shit, but... Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing Mortal Kombat in the art style of, like, a Tekken or a DOA, where it's, it's not... Where it's, like, 3D modeled, but they're pretty. You know, yeah, maybe I'd even, a little yeah. less, a little less with how maybe. how a Western developer designs faces to be sort of fat and uh, pimply. 
I mean, I'd take Mortal Kombat characters as like a guest character in like Smash or something. Like, I have no problem seeing it guest in like other properties that are already like great at that style and know what they're doing and taking it and putting it into that style. That I have no problem with. I was just yeah, my commentary I mean, is more on the game itself. The the primary game. Uh, there's like fan art out change. there of like what if scorpion was in fortnite and i actually i don't mm. hate that I, yeah. I think if scorpion in fortnite looked like the art style of fortnite that would be very appropriate for scorpion in fortnite but right. i don't want mortal kombat 12 to look like fortnite right right <laughs> right yeah definitely a difference there for sure i also just don't have a vision at all i, I think for the most part mortal kombat looks okay if they're gonna make like a drastic like Wind Waker kind of change. I I don't know how often that's ever warranted. Um, I, I'm I am not a guy who likes change for the sake of change, right? Which kind of sums up a lot of the Nether Realm era of Mortal Kombat. So I don't know. I I don't have strong feelings. But if it were up to me, I would say just look at what they're doing right and keep doing that. Yeah. Independently yeah. though, if they made it uh, like I don't know if uh uh. Uh, you foldable like the Demon Slayer studio made a Mortal Kombat movie or Mortal Kombat series, I'd be all over that. That'd be sick. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ragaroth asks, do you imagine a way Smoke returns? He has both cyborg and human slash ninja slash demon versions, but both versions have the harpoon move from the Smoke Triborg variation. I'm guessing they mean... When bringing smoke back, he has yeah. all versions, not just one version, and that they have the harpoon from the smoke triborg variation. Yeah, I mean, I, I've said before, like if if smoke came back and he had like multiple forms, uh, I'd have them function like uh, premier skins do, right. where each skin sort of works like a variation where you've got the same normals and a few of the same specials, but then there are unique things to that skin. Kind of like uh, the human Cyrax and Sector yeah, MK9. Yeah. yeah. It's uh yeah. it's it's a two pronged question, a two tiered question. And after Cyrax and Sector in in nine, there is no reason that you should not have both as an option. The whole should it be a human or should it be a cyber smoke in this game? argument should die they should always both be available with some minor differences like we've established here now as to whether or not he should actually have the harpoon like triborg did maybe as like i don't know part of a combo string or whatnot but you know it's obviously not going to come out of his chest the way triborg fires it out it wasn't right? even a harpoon in triborg was it, was it? wasn't it just of, like it was a series of tridents it was cables it was just yeah, cables, he shot yeah. three cables, but it still reeled you in gameplay wise right, the right. same mechanic as Scorpion Spear. Right. Yeah, it was just like really short range. Yeah, I think you could e exit and it would taser you instead. Maybe, yeah, something like that. But um, I wouldn't yeah. want something that acted like Scorpion Spear anymore. I spent far too many years wanting Smoke to be his own character and his own special moves. Yeah, and I don't know. I just mk9 brought him forward in so many directions and yeah. it's a cool little nod to have him toss those cables and have something that visually and gameplay wise calls back to the like the three cyber harpoons sure but i don't think i need it anymore now that he's got smoke bombs and like tricks like that from nine well i i, I will actually watch a lot of ragaross content um He's, he's in gameplay quite a bit. I think there's sort of an implication in this question. When he says that um, cyborg and human ninja, demon ninjas are demon versions, I feel like demon, because I feel like if you did put a Nenra in a game, there's no reason he couldn't look like and have all the qualities of nano smoke. It just, he'd be metaphysically something different. But he could play and look exactly like Deception Smoke as a, I hate calling him a Nenra, but as a Nenra, right? So um, if you do that, I think you wouldn't, if you had like a spear equivalent, you would just give all versions the smoke ball in the face. And I feel like the only real add-ons would be like a unique one or two special moves, like Razor said, for yeah. each premier skin, and you're good. 
But You're like to to answer specifically about the harpoon, I would have the harpoon be specific to the cyborg skin. I don't think that he needs a scorpion spear ever again in his rake other forms. Although, yeah. like in my own fan fictiony version of Human Smoke, he he would use a kusari gamma, and he'd you know that way he could ha use the sickle the way uh the umk3 axe worked like it it's part of combos and then maybe he could have some moves where he sort of whips out the chain end and the chain has a as a yeah. spear on the end and you could do it like that but i don't i don't see him pulling people in just with a straight rope dart shot the way scorpion does anymore cuz well, i don't I think I don't think we need that kind of moves sharing. It kind of hug over him like a black cloud for way too long. We're just in a weird spot right now because even Scorpion Spear is not Scorpion Spear anymore. It's a meter. Well, burning. obviously, I would never do no what Levin did with the yeah. no yeah. meter burning ever again. That needs to die. I, not I always sure. said that back, way back in the day. I said if you bring back, you know, a true to form robot smoke. Uh, I always thought the the trident uh, cables thing should be a command grab. I don't think it ever needed to be a stagger or combo starter. Um, I was fine with it just being like Venom's uh, web slam in Marvel One. So, yeah, there's a lot of things you could do. you could have the cables and not do Scorpion's shtick. I think very easily. It doesn't take a lot of imagination. So, um, yeah, but the smoke ball is the common denominator among all of them. Yeah, I mean the the smoke ball and the teleport punches, I think are the the basic smoke kit. And then I sort of, I I I like the nine set. And then if you want to have extras, that's where variations come in. Yeah. Or the premier skins, yeah. as it were, for the different forms of smoke. Keep shake. Keep the fake out teleport punch. Keep the air throw. You're good. All right. Uh, moving on, um, non-creative username asks, what characters would you add onto the roster in each MK game and why? Example, adding Cabal to Deadly Alliance, Jade to MK4. Is that something we think we can answer? Or do we want to pin that as like well, more of an episode thing? I can do this. does he want us to do it with? All he of them? wants all of them, each MK game <laughs> and why. <Yeah. laughs> I, I, I can try to answer this very, very briefly for each game. From one through four, I would add all the secret characters to the main roster because they were there. And that's all the justification that I need. Okay. Also, Blaze for Deadly Alliance. Wasn't he on there? I... Like as playable? Or you yeah, he was on the select yeah. screen? He was unlockable. Yeah, he was unlockable. That's true. Okay. It was a secret character, but still kind of unlockable. Right. I wouldn't add Lucan to Deadly Alliance because he did. I would add Noob Cybot and Serena from Tournament Edition onto Deadly Alliance as well. Yeah. Deception, it's hard to think of anyone who should have been there but really wasn't. Maybe I would actually also add Blaze to Deception too as foreshadowing. He was in Perhaps. the Unchained version. Just to like, you know, kind of round it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Unchained added Jax, Katana, Frost, and Blaze. I don't yeah, know those games else... always mess me up just because yeah. anytime I'm talking like characters that missed games, I always have to make a damn asterisk for those damn <laughs> the handheld versions. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you've got Deception. Really... I don't know who else you can really add to Armageddon. Everyone's pretty much already there. I'd give Batara his damn legs back. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, nine, <laughs> not, nine is already pretty much Damn completely it. there. Except it's just it's missing chameleon. I would I would trade all the guest characters for both of the chameleons. <laughs> you guys okay over there? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's just, it's funny your character pick for Armageddon was Motaro's legs. It's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, it should have been its own select screen it's slot. The, it's the... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the, the only men. thing that's not there, man. It's the two men in a Halloween horse costume. <laughs> yeah. They're each their own separate. <laughs> and it's not that they're on separate ends of the screen. They're just right next to each other, but it's still separated by the boxes. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just his back half is in one. I don't know. It'd be funny. Ah, uh, wonderful. Uh, nine <laughs> needs the chameleons. I would still have added them in somewhere. If they didn't do anything in the story, they're the only thing that's missing. Yeah. 
X needed Serena. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, that's a good one. Would have also would have also thrown Lee May in there as well and Smoke too, because I have a bias. Yeah. I don't know offhand who is really missing from eleven apart from Striker and Smoke that I needed to be around. No, you know what? Eleven, I either don't care or I'm satisfied with the roster generally. Anybody else have any ones they can fire off? I mean, I could probably cherry pick a couple yeah. games. I don't know if I could do the full the full spectrum. I can do this fairly quickly. Uh, MK4 is smoke, no doubt. Um, but that's assuming, like, not knowing what we know now. Uh, Deadly Alliance, I would say Ermac, to tie into Kenshi's story. I think there's no reason why. I, I think Hi. it works to have him around. Um, and I think there's art for him in the crit, but I can't remember yeah. anymore. That's a good pick. Um, that, is a, that is a solid pick. Deception is Fujin, easy. Um, Armageddon is Motara's legs. And uh, <laughs> in MK9? <laughs> hmm. I'll say Cyber Smoke for MK9. And then Serena for MKX. Oh, and that, that covers it for me. I mean, I feel like every game should have a cyborg at least. Uh, maybe that's biased, but. Um... If we're talking, I, I like a lot of your picks. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, you know what? Feel... Either deadly a lot. You know, you know what? Deception needed sector running around in the background too. I yeah. think somewhere. It could yeah, given <clears throat> the Mortal Kombat like Deadly Alliance Game Boy Advance game, that yeah, that uh, was it Unchained or was that Deception? I think De that was De that, Deception. That was, that was actually, I think it was also Tournament Edition, wasn't it? Okay, so tournament yeah, he edition. Was in then. Tournament yes, edition, I agree. Which is odd nope. because Sub Zero wasn't in tournament edition. <laughs> you can believe that. <laughs> it's so odd. They removed him. Sub Zero actually missed a game. Um, but yeah, I thinking back, um, I would definitely put Sector in MKX. As much as I was, you know, salty about Cyrax not being in MKX, that was Sector's game. I still maintain. That was the game they should have put Sector on and paid off the whole story of the Cyber Lin Kuei. They should have gone in depth. I mean, you could put Cyrax in there too to really, you know, play up that story as well. But Sector, that should have been for all the people that think, oh, each Cyrax or Sector needs his own game because the other two have had at least a showing where the others weren't around. That was Sector's time. Um, so that one sticks out to me. Uh, I probably would have put both Cyrax and Sector in MK11. Just because they were in the story, they were awesome. Odd that they weren't playable, and yet you could play them, and they had their move sets. Uh, I like the idea of Ermac and Deadly Alliance. That's a good. That's a good call there. And yeah, Serena should have definitely been in um, MKX as well as MK4. Right? Shouldn't she have been? Wasn't that like I, I would that not personally. For one reason, I'd put Noob in first because Noob, yeah, I think, needs Noob to be in MK4. Sure. But also, I like the idea of like Sub Zero not knowing that Serena is alive or not. I think okay. that works a little better. But that's me. I mean, there, I can see intelligent cases made both sides. What about in Deadly There's... Alliance? Maybe. Because wasn't she? I mean, she was in Tournament she Edition, is, right? So, I yeah. mean, Tournament Editions, it, that's story canon. She is involved in the events of Deadly Alliance, and her Armageddon bio references them. I just feel like that would have been a good time to her to make her like actual official debut on a, a playable roster. It's crazy that she waited till Armageddon. Um, Fujin and X also a good one. I mean, hell, his name was up in the clouds, right? With Striker, like that was such a weird tease that they did those stuff for X or for Deception. For Deception, didn't somebody say Fujin for Deception? Like he was up oh, in no. the clouds in the menu screen. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I, I thought you said MKX. My bad. bad. Um, and then I'm trying to think, uh, there was one other one that was sticking out to me. Um, God, I mean, yeah, noob and MK4 for sure. That's it. I mean, obviously I would, I, I don't know. I, I've, it's, it's, I really hate should it. have been in either X or 11, one of the two. I just, yeah. I mean, personal note, I hate that they kept dropping the ball on Cyrax, but it is what it is. Why just like her personality a lot in MKX as well? I can't believe they got that much right. It just blows my mind to this day. And it's funny you say Sector for uh, for MKX as well, because like Sector has probably one of my favorite moments in that game where he tells Quan Chi that he followed the letter of the law and not the spirit so you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. I always thought that was a good moment. That was good. 
Yeah, I mean, he should have been in there. Like, the try, try. I mean, I get what they're the whole thing of Triborg. It is what it is. People, it was to try and please all the fans of the cyborgs without actually putting any of them in the game to do the variation gimmick thing. But that was Sector's game. I feel like. I just think Sector has so much personality whenever he shows up. Even in MK11, I still think he has so much personality. Yeah, he was awesome and real. But when he runs away, we were talking about the Warriors fight. That shit was so funny, man. And like, like I said, going back to MKX, he's like, Quan Chi, I need you to lean in, lean in closer. Fuck you. And I just think that that's such a good representation of Sector's personality, where he doesn't <laughs> give a fuck who he's talking to at all. Uh, he's so cocky and so full of himself. Um, yeah, just. Uh, not my pick, but I think it's a good choice. I, I guess I agree with Shad on Serena just because I think that character was actually done weirdly well on MKX. All right. Yeah, I mean, I um, when we did the rosters, I talked before about like how I would remake the original trilogy and who I would add to that. Like, right. you know, Kenshi and Tremor should be in the invasion and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip ahead to MK4 uh, and say Smoke. And I would put Cabal and Mavado in too because both of them hunting Jarek gives Jarek more importance, and it actually and it also leads to the two of them fighting each other in Mavado's backstory in right. Deadly Alliance. Um, oh yeah, wasn't Kai supposed to be in MK4? Kai is in MK4. Or sorry, not duh. I derp. <laughs> I meant Deadly Alliance. Obviously, he's in MK4. Um, <laughs> he was in the crypt. I don't know what his story like because if if Kai was in the story of Deadly Alliance, if he or Fujin or both of them were there, right. they would have just died when Onaga walked in. You know, like they would have ended up the same place that Kung Lao and Raiden and all the others ended up. So well, I would I mean, rather like in Deadly Alliance, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Lean well, into but, deception, but like just just in terms of story purposes, I would have it be like a reason that they sat out of deadly alliance and then both of them would be in deception because they're like waiting for raiden's team to come home and it's like right. well they've been gone a while you think something bad happened we should probably go into outworld and find out you know so yeah i would have kai and fujin in, de in deception i would have a uh, fucking striker in deception because i'd have him uh we talk about this we just recorded a thing about cobra uh not too long ago for the patron cast and um, we mentioned that in Cobra's bio, uh, the Black Dragons kill New York cops to set him free from a squad car. Stryker's a New York cop and has a history with Cabal, so he should investigate that. Yeah. So that's a reason why he'd be in there. Um, I also like Dairu. We talked about this when we redesigned him for the patron cast, is that he was originally intended to be a rival to Kenshi, and he was, you know, he already is a mercenary, so you can still do this and keep his deception story. He was hired by Shang Tsung to guard the palace, and that's why he fights Kenshi, because Kenshi's trying to get in and assassinate Shang. Uh, um, in deception, I would, uh, I would cut Goro and Shao Kahn, and uh, I would have um, probably so. Other than Fujin Kai and Striker, I would like to have. Um, there was a cut character who was like supposed to be a general of the Mummy Army, uh, like a like a bigger, tougher mummy. And some of his design elements went into one of Havoc's alternate costumes. But I'd rather he was his own character because it always pissed me off that they blew up the mummies in the opening cutscene and they they spent a whole game raising them and onaga doesn't even get to use them right so i would i would want to have the the mummies actually be a thing and then in armageddon i don't know Wu Lei playable i guess you know everybody's in who do you need and i don't really care who was in and out of the of the nrs era games I mean, the Cyber Ninjas should have been in every single game. More Serena would be nice. I guess that's about it. All right. Oh, let's see. Uh, from Born Into It, I recently acquired mythologies from my also recently acquired N64. While skimming through the panels, I noticed Quan Chi mention as payment for a successful mission, he wiped out the Shirai Ryu, including their leader. This confused me because Scorpion, I assumed, was the leader because he's been treated as such in every other instance, and the original Takeda is confirmed to be dead by uh, dead way before the events of the game. 
Yeah, do you yeah. think this was intentional to leave open to more world building, or was the script just poorly written in this instance? No, yeah, Scorpion was uh, never the leader no, until after the clan died. Okay. Scorpion's like, only the leader Scorpion... in the newer games because he brought them back. We, we, He's we, the we, only we, one left. We have never seen a Shirai Ryu Grandmaster. I'm sure that one exists. I'm sure there was a whole structure and hierarchy, but it doesn't matter because they're all dead. The thing Scorpion, is, Scorpion isn't the leader. He's just kind of the protagonist from that clan, the last like, survivor. Sc Scorpion is the best fighter of that clan, the way Sub Zero is the best fighter of his clan. The two of them are uh, rivals to each other. Right. In terms of rank. So, yeah, there was definitely somebody in charge of the clan who isn't Scorpion. Grandmasters don't go on missions. Right. Grandmasters are in charge. They delegate. <laughs> gotcha. The only okay. reason Scorpion and Sub-Zero, once they became the Grandmasters of their clans, uh, go on missions still, is because it, the alternative to doing that is creating more new characters. And NRS doesn't want to do that. Like who would who would be okay with Sub Zero sitting out a game because he spent the whole game in a chair and told uh, Frost to go instead? Maybe that's you what know? he was doing in Tournament Edition. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, Snake Eyes asks question for the cast: Would you prefer a year-long marketing cycle for the next MK game <laughs> so you can speculate and theorycraft the roster and features, or maybe MK could do with a much shorter, protracted hype? cycle with maybe four to six months from announcement to release and have a few key substantial info drops. I personally can't stand the year-long King of Fighters Street Fighter roster cock tease anymore. Uh, a unanimous no, I would have to imagine. No yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Year I think long. we all prefer the, the shorter four to six months. Yeah. Thing. That MKX one was the tipping point. That thing was brutal. If you were a listener to us back then when we first kind of got going in 2014, there was months where we got nothing. There was a good four or five month period where we got zero news. And this was way after the game had been announced. And yeah, we had to wait from like October to February or something or later before we actually got news again. And that is just brutal. Don't start, don't announce your game and start showing things until you're ready to actually kick it into gear the whole way through. I think with MK11, it was perfect for the most part. I mean, as perfect as it's going to get in terms of, I think it was all condensed down to four and a half months, five months tops. And there was a beta in there. There was con pretty consistent reveals. That's so much better. Nobody wants to sit here like Already as it is, it's hard to speculate and theory craft any more for MK12 than we already have. Just because once you cover the 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 few obvious things like roster and story and gameplay modes, what else do you say? We're already and also. Yeah, I mean, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I think I said it in the past. Like the MKX marketing cycle fucked me up psychologically too. So I don't ever want to do that again. Nah, that was rough. Especially when the roster's not good. Like, if you have a long marking cycle and you don't like the reveals, it's rough, man. Yeah, it's hold. It's just hard to hold anybody's attention for that long. Whereas four or five months, that passes by so quickly that it's so easy to keep fairly consistent content. More than you usually don't go more than two or three weeks tops without getting some new reveals and information. I wish my only desires i wish they spread it out a little bit better i think even with mk11 there was like two or three weeks there where they didn't do anything but then they would just like cram a bunch of information in short bits of time like you'd get three character reveals boom 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 instead of like okay we have five months here let's do a reveal every week basically you know what i mean like they could handle it better even still but and that's why i say the it's thing near that perfect. always frustrates me is if you have a roster of 30 characters you can put out one a week for 30 weeks, which is more than half a year. Yeah. But they don't do that. They, they've yeah, never done that, which is, yeah, it's just they crazy always, to they'll, me. They'll release, like, they'll, they'll re reveal four characters at once and, and then, then have yeah. a long gap of time. And by the end of the cycle, there will be characters who did not get an official reveal. Yeah, that was crazy with MK9. Smoke was not officially revealed going into MK9, except for oh, the, the King of the uh, Hill little avatar. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, we saw leaked footage first. I mean, yeah. okay, so he, he was, was teased on the developer page um, where they had Smoke's model in the background. But, like, you could barely see him, right? Like, yeah. we were, like, maybe 40% sure it was even Smoke. And what really said about MKX is... 
I, I mean, the game came out, I want to say, in, like, April or May. And, like, on the eighth month of the marketing cycle, we were like, will Fujin make it? And I don't want to do that ever again. That right. sucked. Yeah. Me, Django, and Cyborg had a bet over whether Fujin was going to be unlockable. And that was after the, sele- the final select screen was revealed. Um, <sighs> yeah, I don't ever want to do that again. Yeah, we're too old for that kind of crap. And just too seasoned, too grizzled, some 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 degree of jadedness <laughs> like you gotta like uh like that's that that year long plus stuff is for the that's the youngins out there I, like i live i live in a post hype world i can't do it anymore i can't deal with like uh, the marketing machine i can't deal with everyone and their mother having an opinion about every sixth different thing i just i ignore it all honestly in a way it doesn't even really matter to me if it's a year out or if it's like four months because i generally just i'm not on that train anymore i can't be bothered with it i'll check out whatever comes out but i'm not sitting there hitting f5 on like whatever 4chan board looking for leaks and rubbing my hands and yeah, biting no, nails no. it's just that's, that's i'm not there yeah that's a whole nother level leaks like going after those and living in that world but like it but doesn't yeah. mean i'm not excited for the game it's just that i just i don't have it in me to just be on tenterhooks on like it, walking on eggshells about a game for that sure. kind of period anymore you know what i'd actually like it you know what it's I'd actually exhausting love? if they would just like it's not good it's, it'll never actually happen but if they would just actually do something like hey guys uh, guess what mk is out next week have fun Fucking yeah, shadow drop. Oh, I would freak love a shadow out. drop. Freak everyone out. That'd be great. I thought that's what we might be getting with MK12 last year, whenever it was. Like, I, I last year or the year before that, I think it was the video game awards we all watched together. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if they just shadow dropped it? Like, hey, like a week from now, you're getting the game. Like, that would be pretty tight. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, definitely do not want a year cycle. I think four or five months is plenty. And yeah, like I said, I think MK11 handled it pretty well outside of just some spacing issues with their content, like Razor kind of laid out. And even back then when I was like jamming F5, I, I didn't feel good. I didn't enjoy oh, that. it's unhealthy. I wasn't it's... doing that because I was ex- excited. I was doing that because yeah. I was worried most of the time. It's unhealthy. It doesn't lead to healthy behavioral patterns or lifestyles. It's It can be very taxing on your mental health and just your time i mean we all have uh, an unknown limited amount of time on this earth that that's just not a healthy way to live so but uh yeah um aim dopeness and we're we're nearing the end here last couple if you guys are still taking q a's question with the recent news and discussion about live service games winding down and in a lot of cases shutting down, do members of the Nethercast believe this bodes well for MK12 to not have the toxic live service features in its game? We can talk about positives all day, but in my opinion, if live service is dying, I hope MK stays away from it. It's the number one non-gameplay or story thing that hurts this franchise for me in my personal opinion. Uh, I mean, I've spoke a lot on live service stuff when it comes to like battle passes. And I, I, when I was on the shred cast, that was kind of the main topic we covered was live service features to keep people coming back. Like, you know, weekly attires, you know, released for free or in the shop. And then all that whole fun thing that everybody does these days for free to play games, so on and so forth. Um... Yeah, there are a lot of games that that's not working out so well anymore. I can't remember the last couple that have been shutting down. I think it was Apex Legends Mobile and then uh, the Knockout Where's City. Where's Marvel? Yeah, Marvel thing and then Knockout the City thing. just recently shut down. Um, yeah, so a lot of them are stopping and some others have had a lot of the trouble. Thing is, the thing is, it's probably... Uh, too late in yeah. the development cycle for NRS to react to that. Yeah, because uh, Suicide Squad isn't out yet, and we've already seen that it's it's going to have some live service elements when it's uh when its main menu leaked. Yeah. Uh, the the one thing I will say is that I the thing that bothers me the most about live service is that it's so anti future proofing. Like, what happens when you you can't re-release a game that needs servers 
if you can't afford to run servers. Yep. So, yep. so once the servers go down for like MK11, how are we ever supposed to uh, get like a re-release of MK11? You know, like 20 years from now, maybe somebody wants to play it for some reason and they're like, well, right. we can't put it back out because it's a live service game and none of those mechanics are online anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to champion anything about live service stuff. I mean, in a perfect world, we don't need any of that stuff to begin with. I think all of us, if we if we had it the way we wanted it, it would just be the way games used to be. And it's a complete game out of the gate and you can unlock stuff. It's not a grind like Mortal Kombat 11 or Injustice 2. It's completely fun. And the game being as fun as it is is what keeps you playing. That's all they need. And then the occasional update where they should have some free stuff and then maybe some paid DLC that's actually reasonable. A few skins here or there that are not, you know, charging you an arm and a leg for them and then put out some new fighters. You do all that and you'll have a good time. It's just, yeah. I... It's, you know, it's it's the DLC argument all over again, isn't it? Like, like we're, we're, we're old enough that we remember when that was first a thing. It's like, this could be a really great thing or this could be a bad thing. It all depends on how the companies actually use it. And of course, it's not frequently used in a way that's intuitive, that'll actually give you interesting things afterwards. Because there's always that period where you have to see what people will tolerate, what people are willing to actually throw at you. But of course, yet companies that'll use it to gank you for every dollar that they can get out of you. To which I say, fuck you, I'm old. Give me a hundred dollars, I'll get and give me I'll I'll give you a hundred dollars, you give me a fucking game. That's it. Gabagool, fuck you. We've <laughs> 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 been at this for too long, guys. We've been at this for yeah. too long. I think uh I think Razor probably is right though. I think it's too late to change course. That's not how games are made. They don't just overnight completely change probably an infrastructure that's at its core i mean halo infinite if you followed that at all that game is dying a death because they built their game around a live service that they were not prepared for i mean they they can't make any changes to their game based on fan feedback without taking months because of just how they structured it is not good at all so if mk12 I would I would imagine it's not the shit show that Halo Infinite is by by God no that's not the case but I it's way too late I mean we're talking about a game that could be released in eight months tops and I just don't think that's going to be quick enough to change out probably all that type of stuff so I think the best we can hope for is that they learned their mistakes from MK11 and Injustice 2 and backed off the grind and thought of a different more acceptable way that respects its players time to keep them engaged in wanting to play their game. That's not nearly also, as aggressive. I think when it comes to like fan feedback, this is the hardest thing to communicate as well, because like when you go on Twitter and say Sindel's MK11 story isn't good, like in theory, a developer might read that. I mean, more than likely you're just throwing like a, a note with a bottle into the ocean, but at least it's possible but like the odds are that the people who are in charge of that call aren't even the devs. So I think there's just too many layers between the fans and the people who do make those decisions on how the game makes money. Um, I, I don't think a dude in a suit is gonna go on Twitter. I don't, I don't think the person in charge of any of that is even in the same room as the feedback, right? So I think uh, they, it's kind of a fatalistic situation to begin with. Those dudes that make those decisions, they're just in boardrooms looking at stats on a yeah, graph I, somewhere and looking at what is the what is the way we can do this to make us the most amount of money or the most amount of engagement with our audience without potentially pissing them off. Let's ride that line as close as possible. And what they usually do is they make it intentionally bad at the start. Because then they know people are going to complain no matter what they give us. So that way then they can come back and say, we listen to your feedback. We're dialing it back. They'll dial it back maybe by 20%. We already know that this this happened with Red Dead. This even happened with MK11. They put out the combat cast like week of release or even before. And they're like, we hear your, or no, it's the week after release. And they, we hear your feedback. It's too grindy. You remember uh, Derek, he'd give that very serious look towards the camera. Like, you know, like yeah, we've yeah, heard they, your feedback. They, 
they, they do this intentionally. The, well, I mean, they tune the towers like two different occasions. Yeah, they do this intentionally because they know out of the gate people are going to complain because it's very demanding of your time and very grindy and not player friendly. They do well, it the intentionally is- like that because they know people are going to complain. So that way they can turn around, say, we listen to your feedback. They dial it back by 20%, which is probably worse than what they originally were going to lead with anyways. But now you think it's better because it's better comparatively what to, to what they let off with. This is just company spin 101. They did it in Injustice 2 also. So it's like they don't. Yeah. And, like, and they this, don't actually learn. They just start the cycle over. The and thing this is, like, the, the man in a suit, yeah. the, the feedback he does look at is, like, other companies' live service games are failing, and it might be like, okay, well, that trend is dying, but this game's been in development for four years, and those features are already baked in. It's way too late to take them out. Yeah, they're not the ones that listen to feedback. NRS, they the developers, the ones on the field, they're going to be the ones that see it on Twitter. They might take that, go to the higher ups, and say, "Look, people are complaining. Players are unhappy. This is a this is a sour note. This is a sore point with players." They may have even warned them ahead of time. And then what they're going to do is basically try and wheel and deal and find a compromise that's going to work for those higher ups. Then they'll get the approval. They'll make some changes, and it's just going to be a back and forth with the community and that's all up to the community on how much they want to keep fighting if the community takes that first you know that dialing back a 20 percent, and then they stop complaining about it that'll be the end of it that's all you're going to see in terms of that change if you keep fighting over it and you keep you know putting a fire under their ass they might dial it back further but yeah this is just the dance we got to do unfortunately with all these games these days it sucks and And i hope that's um... not going to be the case with mk12 but realistically it probably will be well it's also unbelievably like the whole corporate like system i don't think people realize just how corrupt it is because what people what middle managers do is they make a decision that is super fucked up and after it happens they basically rig the model that makes it look like they did a good job and i saw this so much in the i've spent so many meetings with middle managers and just like the stuff I've seen, I can't unsee. But what happens is the people on top have no idea how anything actually works. Yeah. So if a middle manager says it, it's a huge success, all they need is the right graph and the right figures. Not all the yep. figures. They, they don't want to put their, their cards down, but they know how to trick these stupid old men and in ties into thinking stupid shit. It's so fucked up. Um, it's also not something that's... It's not based on player feedback it's based on money and statistics if you're playing the game your their their tactics are working if you're spending your money on the game their tactics are working they don't care if you complain on twitter they don't compare they don't care about this the only thing that's going to affect them is if enough people rally on it but once again they're going to make the smallest amount of um compromises with you to still keep the the illusion that they listen to you and they're giving in to you, um, but that's just not that's not how it goes. It's just it sucks that this is gaming these days. I mean, Shad, I'm sure could tell us all about it, but it's it's about that time. You don't want to get me started. There are yeah. so many reasons I left the industry. So many. And you so, know what's yeah. funny? When that asshole pitches it and it goes through and it doesn't work, everyone tweets Boone. And that probably really sucks. Yeah, and it's not, and that's one thing I want to like really hammer down. This is not NRS's call. This is not three for three's call for Halo. This is not the developers that are putting in the blood, sweat, and tears on this. These are the people, like Temp kept saying, this is the suit. These are the suits that are making it because they just want a bigger mansion. They want to, you know, another, you know, another yacht, so on and so forth. That's all they care about. They don't care about us enjoying the game that we grew up with you know that's not how they think and well that is i've seen the opposite actually i've seen where the dudes on top actually did mean well but there was a bunch of like snakes and middle managers you're telling right, them bullshit right. and nothing good could ever happen because they could never get correct data that yeah, sucks that's fair i mean that's that's a fair correction to what i just said but yeah uh that's the way it is and unfortunately we're going to end things out on that sour note but uh i want to thank everybody for um submitting your questions and we'll definitely be doing this again because we 
quite frankly, we got to have topics to talk about until the game's revealed. And we've got some other things to revisit, like continuing our anniversary series. But we will definitely get back to some more questions um, eventually. And hopefully you all enjoyed this and we satisfied your curiosities in all the right ways. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, maybe a few of the wrong ones. <laughs> and if you've listened to this, yeah. and if you've listened to this for this long, and you still haven't subscribed, what the hell are you doing with yourself? Make sure you do that. Like the video, share it, subscribe, comment down below. Just, uh, five stars on iTunes. I think we're on iTunes. Yeah, we're on iTunes, Google Play Store. So if you're uh, caring about your data and all that stuff, you're one of those guys. We still upload these up onto the old iTunes. Um, but uh, yeah, on that note, we must bid you adieu until next time. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. See you later, nerds. Take care, everybody. Until next time. That was pathetic. <laughs>